Lucy was a young widow in the middle of reviving her travel career when she spotted a mysterious man living in a one-bedroom shack on the coast. Her life transformed when she decided to follow the mysterious man. Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Lucy was a 32-year-old widow and travel writer. She traveled the world for over 10 years with her late husband, a photographer. Since he had died three years prior, Lucy took a long break from touring. She recently decided to pursue her passion again and began with a small, gorgeous Canadian town. She chose a small town with a few residents and even fewer tourists. She enjoyed these small towns because she could get to know the community well without the chaos caused by tourists. Two days into her trip in the small town, she was drinking her morning tea at a local cafe. She noticed a small house close to the shore. It looked like it was only one bedroom, which was strange considering that most homes on the coast were bigger and were built a long time ago. She called for a waitress and asked, Do you know who built that tiny house? A man moved in here about three months ago and built it. I've seen him a few times, but all I know about him is that he's from Italy and doesn't speak much English, the waitress said. As they were discussing the strange man, they saw him walk out of his house, drinking a cup of coffee. He simply sat there and stared at the ocean for a long time before he walked back into his home. I would also heard that he leaves his house every night and only comes back early in the morning, the waitress added. Do you know where he goes? Lucy asked. No idea. People just can't figure him out because he doesn't interact with them much. She shrugged then walked away. Lucy was interested to know more about the mysterious man, so she decided to follow him later that night. She intended to keep her distance so as not to frighten him, but the man saw her before they got far. Why are you following me? He asked as soon as he saw her. Lucy tried to explain herself in English, but remembered the waitress saying he was from Italy. Do you speak Italian? I am fluent, so that we can chat, she said. The man agreed and invited her to walk with him. Thirty years ago, my parents were on a honeymoon cruise, and they shipwrecked on the Canadian shore. Before my father drowned, he gave my mother a gold necklace. Women in our family pass it down through the generations, Andrea said, but sadly the necklace fell from her neck while she was on the shore, and she never saw it again. His story touched Lucy. But do you think you'll find it? It's been so long since she lost it, she asked. I don't know, but I promise that I will, he said. But why do you go out at night? Lucy asked. The tide is low at night so that I can go further into the sea. I use a metal detector to help me look, and hopefully, I will find it one day," Andreas explained. Lucy offered to help him. She explained that she was in no hurry to return home and would gladly spend the next couple of days helping him look. But a couple of days turned into four months of Lucy and Andreas working together to find the necklace. They grew incredibly close over that time. One night, Lucy and Andreas found a gold necklace and rushed back to Andrea's house to confirm with the photo his mom gave him. The chain looked precisely like the one in the picture, and they were overjoyed. I can't wait to show this to my mother, Andrea's cried. A few days later, Andrea's and Lucy traveled to visit Andrea's mother in Italy. Dina cried when she saw the necklace. I never thought I would see this again, she said. She pointed to an engraved date on the necklace. See, this is our wedding anniversary. Your father was so romantic. Lucy and Andrea spent hours listening to Dina reminisce on her relationship with her late husband. And while Lucy was making the tea in the kitchen, Andrea confessed his love for her to his mom. Dina laughed. I knew at the moment I saw you together. I'm so happy for both of you, she said. Andrea proposed to Lucy six months into their relationship. She had decided to spend a couple of months in Italy before traveling again but she felt uncertain about starting a relationship while reviving her career. Andrea's promised to support her and even travel with her if she wanted it. Lucy said yes, and they announced their engagement to Dina. Then it means this necklace belongs to you now, Dina said as she handed the necklace to Lucy. I promised my husband I would pass it on to the women in the coming generations in our family. Lucy was honored by the gift and promised to take care of the necklace for as long as it was in her care. Shortly after the wedding, the couple traveled together to Lucy's country of choice. 
They were perfect travel companions and wrote several travel books together. Lucy was soon pregnant with their first child, and they were excited to be a little traveling family. What can we learn from this story? Love shows up in unexpected places. Andreas and Lucy never imagined falling in love when they met and started searching for the necklace together. Family loyalty can span generations. Andreas remained loyal to his mother and searched for months to find her necklace. Please share this story with your friends. It might inspire people to share their own stories or help someone else. Let's move on to the next story. When a woman returned home from work, she discovered any mother's worst nightmare, her baby was missing. Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. She realized he had been kidnapped and never stopped thinking about him. Maria Manch's life changed forever in 1995 when someone stole her 18-month-old son. The suspect, who was someone Mancha knew, took heirlooms, ultrasound photos, and various documents along with baby Steve. The baby's father was the alleged kidnapper, and he kept Steve away from Mancha for more than two decades. The mother's heartbreak and longing for her son felt never-ending, but she continued to believe they would meet again. Mancha thought about her son frequently and wondered if he would remember her with each passing year. The California mom revealed that Steve's father, Valentin Hernandez, disagreed with her on many things after the baby was born. It was purported that Hernandez took Steve with him to Mexico to raise him as he saw fit. Thankfully, Mancha never gave up hope and remained in contact with the police. In 2016, 21 years after Steve's disappearance, she finally got her miracle. Authorities at the San Bernardino County District Attorney's Child Abduction Unit received news that her son might be in Mexico. Once they performed a DNA test, they confirmed that he was indeed Mancha's son. The young man revealed that his father told him Mancia walked out on both of them when he was a baby. He was emotional when he heard the truth. As Mancha hugged her 22-year-old son for the first time in two decades, she could not control her emotions. Investigators were thrilled to have helped reunite the duo, and their story touched many hearts. It also showed people that they should never give up hope that their loved ones would return. Tears ran down Mancha's face, and she shared, Now this anguish I've carried is gone now that I have my son back. For Steve, it was a shock, but he was excited to get to know his mother. He stated, I didn't know if she was alive or not, and to get a call that says they found my mother and that she had been looking for me. It was like a cold bucket of water. Despite the life-altering surprise, he said it was good to hear from his mother. The law student had plans to move his studies to the U.S. to be closer to Mancha and his newly discovered family. His father was believed to be deceased, but a $750,000 warrant for his arrest was still active. The grateful mother is thrilled to have an opportunity to make up for the lost time with her son. Thanks to the successful investigation, years of longing came to an end for Mancha, and her son finally got the chance to spend time with a mother he never knew. Sadly, children are kidnapped more than expected, and sometimes the parents are involved. Lineth Man Lewis was also devastated when her baby disappeared in 1987. She wondered about him for 31 years before police had a breakthrough. The child's father, Alan Mann, was responsible for the kidnapping and moved him to Canada. After a lifetime apart, Germain Mann was finally located and reunited with his mother in 2018. Man Lewis was excited to get to know her son, like Mancha. It was not easy for either of the families, but their stories give hope to many others who are still looking for lost loved ones.